So let's say I want to find the gradient of the chord that joins these two coordinates. So what I mean by that is I'm going to draw a line that joins these two points together and I want to know what the gradient of that line is. Okay, that's what I mean by joining these two, these two coordinates together with a chord. So A minus 2, 7 and B 2 minus 1. So this one, B, is going to be further to the right and further down. So A is going to be up here, B is going to be somewhere down here. So there's A minus 2, 7 and B 2 minus 1. So if I draw in our, probably getting bored of these now, these right angled triangles, okay, okay, because it all really comes down, down to that, then we can find the gradient by finding the difference in the y coordinate divided by the difference in the x coordinate. Now, seeing as we're going from minus 2 up to 2, that means the difference in the x coordinate is 4. And because we're going from minus 1 up to 7, the difference in the y coordinate is 8. So a very common error in this would be, therefore, to say that the gradient of this chord joining A and B is the difference in Y divided by the difference in X, which in this case is 2. Now, it is a very common error to see this happen. Okay. Now, it may seem that you're going, well, what's wrong with it? Well, the problem is that this line clearly has negative gradient and it's not reflected by the gradient that we found. So it should be a minus 2, not a positive 2. So if you're going to go via this method of drawing a little diagram, then you must pay attention to the diagram that you've drawn, okay? And think, well, actually, because my diagram is showing that it's a negative gradient, this should be negative here as well, okay? Now, in order to avoid this error, in the majority of cases, you really want to get into the habit of just, instead of drawing a little diagram like that, you go straight in with a calculation to find M. So to find M, you can do the difference in the Y coordinates, just as I've done, but if you maintain that you're going Difference between 7 and minus 1, so we do 7 take away minus 1, and we do minus 2, so the difference in the x-coordinates now, minus 2 take away 2. So you'll notice that I always went that one, that one, that one, that one. Okay, difference in y's, difference in x's. Now we could also have done this by starting over here and saying minus 1 take away 7 and then doing 2 take away minus 2. These two both give exactly the same result. So we've got 7 take away minus 1 which is 8. Minus 2 take away 2 is minus 4 and we get the minus 2. If we did it the other way around minus 1 take away 7 is minus 8. 2 take away minus 2 is 4. So minus 8 divided by 4 is minus 2. So it doesn't matter which one or which way round you do it, just so long as you do it right. Okay. Now the way to remember which it is, is it working with a top? Um, is it the x's in the top or is it the y's in the top? Always remember it as dy by dx. Difference in y divided by difference in x dy by dx, because if when you go into looking at calculus and differentiation, you use dy by dx a lot, okay? And it reminds you that difference in y is at the top, difference in x at the bottom, okay? So in general, if you had two coordinates, a with x1, y1 as its coordinates, and b with x2, y2, then the gradient is y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2.
Okay. Notice how I'm maintaining x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay. They marry up because they're on top of each other. Okay. Like that. The ones and then the twos. You shouldn't have one, two, um, two, one, or vice versa. Okay. That shouldn't happen. You should have ones and then twos. Or, of course, you could write that as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, in precisely the same way as this reversed its direction. These are both exactly the same calculations and get you the same result.